compressor. Uh, okay, so first off, before I begin, I will say, if the audio sounds different, it's not the mic, it's the location. I've, well, if you follow me on Twitter, uh, you'll have seen me tweeting that I moved. Um, yeah, uh, I think Emery and I talked about it in our last episode, the Christmas Eve episode, that I was going to move. Um, I had pe people on Facebook, I had to, like, explain, oh, this was the plan all along, because I'd say, oh, I'm moving, and they're like, oh, are they kicking you out? Are you and Emery not friends anymore? I was like, uh, no, this, this was the plan. I was always going to move. It was only temporary. But now I got my own place here in San Francisco. And, uh, yeah, I don't really have anything at the moment. I have an air mattress and my Switch and the few this and that's. Um, but I do have plans for the next couple of months. Hopefully, once I start getting things in the room, it'll be less echoey. Currently, it is very echoey. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, this is episode 49. Uh, next, I already have, I know what my next episode's going to be. Episode 50. I've been planning it. Uh, it's, I'm going to have a guest, a special guest, that I've been talking with. We're trying to figure out how we're going to do this. Um, but it's going to be a really big episode. I've been really planning it. And it's, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> but, anyway... This episode is part three of the trilogy of episodes I've been talking about. If you've been following me on Twitter, I've been kind of changing what this is going to be. Is There's going to be a direct... I Okay, so the first one was my favorite albums of all time. The second one was my favorite soundtracks. And this one was supposed to be my favorite game soundtracks. That's what this one was supposed to be. But then when I went to go prepare to do the episode... I didn't have that many. <clears throat> I I honestly I didn't. I thought that there's not a lot of good game soundtracks. It's just that there's not a lot on Spotify, and that's what this whole thing was supposed to be like creating a like. Hang on. Okay, that was weird. I could have sworn I heard someone knocking. And when I uh, I played back that part of the recording, I heard someone knocking. So, you know, second night in the new place, and I'm hearing things and picking up the recording. So, I don't know. Maybe this place is haunted. <laughs> have to add that to my, uh, my list of places I've lived that's haunted. <laughs> Anyway, so I I have this the playlist folder of the my favorite albums and favorite soundtracks, but then I have uh, let's see game soundtracks. There's only ten, which technically there's only seven because there's three volumes of one. So and then like another volume and yeah, and the ones I really wanted to add didn't. They weren't on Spotify. I had to find uh, like a playlist somebody put together of songs that are like covers of those songs because for some reason they don't like putting games soundtracks on Spotify. But anyway, that I, so what I tweeted that it was going to be a mini so instead where I was just going to say, "Hey, these are the ten soundtracks I like for games, some of my favorites," but. Uh, I didn't get to that. I I was I was going to because I wanted the the New Year the Christmas Eve episode with Emery to be the last episode of the year, and so I didn't have time to do that real fast before the episode because Christmas Eve. <laughs> by the time I realized that it was like Christmas Adam, and so I didn't have time to do that. And then as I was thinking about it, I was like, wait, why don't I just do an episode on my favorite games? And incorporate the list I made while making a new list on Evernote. The sponsor of the, no, I'm kidding. I don't. <laughs> so I don't uh, can you imagine if I had a sponsor? Uh, um, yeah, Evernote is actually it is a great app. Um, 
I've I've had an account since 2013, I think, 2014, and I've put everything on there, like my like all my notes for podcasts, like like my podcast descriptions on every episode are on here, and like ever my whole life is on Evernote basically. So if I just need to jot something down, it's on Evernote. <laughs> they they should sponsor me at this point. <laughs> anyway. So I made a list of my favorite games. And that's what this episode is. It's my favorite games. And I'm going to start this off by... I'm just going to go down the list of the um, what the game soundtracks were. The, the one that has multiple parts, has multiple volumes, Demo. It's a, it's a mobile game Embry told me about, but then it's also on Switch. Uh, Life is Strange, Ori in the Blind Forest, Elder Scrolls Sk- Skyrim, Minecraft, Fallout 4, Diamond City Radio, Grand Theft Auto 5, and Subnautica. But the reason I don't I don't mind just reading that list out is because it was an incomplete list to begin with. And yeah, not all of these games are on the list I'm about to read. Most of them are, some of them are not. So it's not a spoiler. And much like the soundtracks list, I kind of split them up. However, um, it didn't go the way I was planning because I I put them by, by system. There's Xbox exclusive, PlayStation exclusives, Nintendo exclusives, and then general games. That, like, are on all consoles. And, yeah, there's four Xbox, five PlayStation, five Nintendo, and, and like, 30 General. So, yeah, that didn't go as planned. Also, and, like, the hard thing about that, though, is, like, you know, people criticize Xbox for not having that many good exclusives. They they kind of do, but then, like, they loan them out. Like, Ori and the Blind Forest and Will of the Wisps were Xbox exclusives. But then they loaned it to Nintendo. Like, you can you can buy them on Nintendo. There's a lot of Xbox exclusives you can buy on, on the Switch. Uh, something I've noticed over the last few years... Um, uh, Microsoft and Nintendo have basically become like friends. They're still competitors, but they've like teamed up. And it's kind of funny though because uh, Microsoft's like, "Here, we'll let you, you, we'll let you uh, have uh, some of our games to put on your console." And Nintendo's like, "Oh, thank you." And then they're like, uh, "Can can we can we borrow Mario or Zelda?" And Nintendo's like, "Ha ha, you're cute." <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that's never going to happen. Can you imagine Breath of the Wild on the Xbox One X? <clears throat> oh, wait, we're past that. The Series X? <laughs> Get with the times. Anyway, continuing with the list. <laughs> this is not a complete list, by the way. Even this, I I went through... All, Cause I make I take note of every game I have. I am so OCD. Like I am like not just you know like I hate when people are like, well I'm OCD about that, like, but they're not actually OCD. I'm actually OCD, and sometimes I'll tell people that, and they're like, oh yeah, I hear that a lot, but they're not really OCD. And then when they spend some time with me, they're like, huh, you really are OCD, aren't you? Um, I make lists of everything. I have a list of. Every game I own, I have like an Xbox list. I have, I literally have 535 Xbox games. And okay, well, I'm gonna say I'm doing this. I'm doing this. Nintendo Switch games, I have 178 digital and 14 physical. And PlayStation games, I have 142. Now, okay, so with okay, I'm before I go back. Just talk about the rest of those lists. I'm just gonna go and say, I looked through all of my game lists 
Because obviously I don't remember every game I've ever played. And I put I made a list of all the ones that I own that I consider to be some of my favorites. And I even I even wrote down some that I don't own because you know I I do remember some things not having to write them down sometimes even though I had to look up what episode I'm on. <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm going to start with the Xbox one. Uh, starting with... Oh yeah, by, by incomplete list, I mean... Sometimes I just put one title to represent an entire series. And I wrote down my favorite title in this series. Starting with Forza Horizon 3. <laughs> I've played the first four. I haven't played the new one. Because I haven't had an Xbox since it came out. Uh, since the fifth one came out, I I got rid of my Xbox and moved to San Francisco. I couldn't take everything. I only brought my Switch. And, um, yeah. So I like. Okay, I'm not a big fan of racing games. I they really bore me. I don't like Forza Motorsport. I've I've tried them. I own a couple because they were free on Games with Gold. Um, couldn't get into them. Forza Horizon, however, it's an open world racing game, and I just. I I don't really care for the racing part. I just I mean I do race in it, but it's the, the I don't know, just something about it. It's just driving around it. It's just so fun. I love it. And then there's Crackdown 3, which I only put because it's the newest one. I I own all 3. I love all 3. And really the only main difference between the 3 are the graphics. The all 3 are pretty much similar. In my opinion, I I actually never heard of Crackdown until people started really started complaining about Crackdown Three being delayed, and I'm like, "What's Crackdown 3? And they were like, "Oh, let me fill you in." And so then, like, I looked into it and I bought them because they were on sale in the store, and Crackdown One and Two, and I played them and I'm like, "Oh, these are great!" I didn't beat them, but I played them. I played them a lot and I liked them. And the Crackdown 3 finally came out. And I'm like, this is more of the same with better graphics. Which is not a complaint. Because they're great games. I really like them. And a lot of people, I guess a lot of people complain about Crackdown 3. I don't know why. Probably because it's too similar. It's not, not much different. Um, I, I didn't mind it. Uh, State of Decay. Stated, I like both games. It's funny is when I, I, I finally switched. I think I told my my video game story in uh, one of my episodes, one of my earlier episodes, my, my, my history with video games. I actually didn't get into Xbox until like 2016. And um, I don't remember when exactly it was. I, I got Game Pass at some point. And then... State of Decay was one of the first games I saw on Game Pass. And I was like, oh, this game's amazing. And I played it for hours. And then next thing I knew, they were like, State of Decay 2 coming straight to Game Pass. I was like, oh! And it's even better than the first one. And the last one here that I have on the Xbox tab, tab, category, list, section thing section there we go fable i've always heard about fable i've ne i've never played it and i only played it because of game pass and i liked it so much i like the first one i didn't like it i didn't like too much at first um it was mostly fable 2 and 3 that i really loved um but then like because i liked those so much i went back and wow yeah, this street's noisy. Uh, that was a truck going by. Um, <laughs> because I like Fable 2 and 3 so much, I went back and tried Fable 1 again, and I was like, oh, this is even better than I thought. <laughs> Why did I not like this? And, in fact, I liked them so much, I went ahead and bought them. I think they're still available on Game Pass, so I didn't have to do that. I just liked them that much. Now, here they're making a fourth one. I don't know if it's a direct sequel or if it's a reboot. One thing I liked about the the three games is they were progressive. Like the first one is like ancient medieval 
type of thing, and then, like, the second one's a little, like, more in the future, and the third one is, like, more, it's, like, you play as, like, the sibling of your character, I mean, like, the offspring of your, or descendant of your character from the second game, and, and it's a little more in the future, like, technology, it's more further, and I would love if the fourth one was, like, even more in the future, and they had, like, cars and stuff. I don't remember. I haven't played it in years. They might have had the cars in the in the third one. I don't remember much about like the story. I just remember. I actually um. <laughs> I don't remember if it was the second or third one, where you make camp at this like a, like this little colony like in the trees, and like I, I I stopped playing after I I can't remember what I did. I upset everybody in the village, or the like little colony tribe thing, and I felt bad, and I just, I didn't, I didn't go back to it. <laughs> I don't know why, um, but, like, Xbox does have more exclusives, it's just hard to determine what's an Xbox exclusive, because they loan out all their exclusives. Um, like, I, I think, Crackdown might be, anyway, so, moving on to PlayStation. The first one is honestly probably one of my favorite games of all time. Like this is a list of like not all of these I would consider like my favorite games of all time. There's this like on if I could if I you know if I were to make a list of wait, I did. This is uh, Wow. That metaphor. If I were to make a list of Yeah, this is, I literally did that. List of my favorite games. This is a list of my favorite games. But, like, not my... I, okay, I could never make a top 10 list of my favorite games. But I do have this one. It'll always be near the top. I don't know if it's my favorite game of all time, but it's definitely one of my favorites. Horizon Zero Dawn. This game was the first game on PlayStation I ever got Platinum. And if you don't know what that means, it means I got every single trophy in the game. And it's the first time, it's the only game I've ever gotten Platinum on. Out of the hundreds of games I've played on PlayStation, that's how much I loved it. And yeah, I could I could do a full episode on Horizon Zero Dawn. And I wish I had a PlayStation so I could play Horizon uh, forgot the name. Forgotten West? I don't know. It looks good. It's set in San Francisco. Oh, yeah, that's where I'm at now. I'm just being forgetful. <laughs> I was about to say, like, I can't wait to go to San Francisco someday. Like, wait, I live there now. <laughs> um, Moving on to Flower. Which was an interesting game concept from that game company. That's literally, literally their name, that game company. And they also made Journey. And basically, like, there's no real controls in Flower. And there's no characters. Now, if someone were to come to you and say, play this game with no controls or characters... What would you do? <laughs> yeah, you basically play as the wind. And there is technically a control. You press down literally any button. You press any button. And you move around by just moving the controller. Because it has that, that uh, six axis. And you just... And you just, like, move the controller. And move... Like, you... It starts off with like one flower petal, and you press any button. I usually press the um, the X button, and it just it blows the wind. And then you just move the controller, and it just blows the wind. And then like you go along this path and like collect flower petal. It sounds boring the way I described it, but it is amazing. And if it was one of the soundtracks I looked up, and they didn't have, um, the, the soundtrack is like half the fun and it is such a great game i wish it was more popular journey was their next game and it blew up like 
I show you a screenshot from Journey. You're like, oh, that's Journey. But, like, nobody's heard of Flower. <laughs> the next one is Infamous, Second Son. <laughs> now, this is one of those cases where I put one title that's my favorite in the series, but I like the whole series. Infamous 1, 2, and this is the third one. I beat all three of them. And I always try to go the good route. So on the first two, I finished it on um, the good side. Like I tried to be, you know, the good character. I don't like doing the evil character stuff. And so I finished Second Son as the good character. But I liked it so much. I played it through a second time and got the evil ending where I turned evil. And... It was actually so much more fun to the point where I wanted to go back and play the other two, but I didn't have them anymore. I, I, don't, I don't actually own those. I rented those off of Gamefly. So by the time I had beaten Second Son twice, I had already given back the other two. And I was like, oh, wait, come back. <laughs> and then there's um, Ratchet and Clank 2016. Which is another case of me putting my favorite in a series, but I actually like not the whole series. I like like the very first three. I think I don't know. I don't remember. They made like a hundred of those games, and at some point it just went off the rails, and it just was no longer fun anymore. Uh, it was um, like the first like two or three were really good, and then. I lost track of what they were doing because, like, there was, like, this one Ratchet and Clank game where, like, you're, like, Clank isn't with you. He's overseeing some arena and you're in the arena and you have to fight all these competitors. And it's like, this, this isn't a Ratchet and Clank game. It's just an arena fighter. It's just fun. And I, I don't know if the series went away for a while, but then they made a movie and then to go along with the movie, they actually made a tie-in game to go with the movie. But the movie was uh, like an adapt. Okay, this is always it's kind of confusing. The movie is an adaptation of the first game, and the game, this game, is an adapt is like a movie game tie-in. So technically, it's a remake of the first game. But it's not... I don't know. I just know it's really good. Because, like, they... It's... it's the first one's really good, too. But they, like... It, they, it is basically a remake of the first game. It, it is... They improved it. They Because there's a lot of stuff they added throughout the series they didn't have in the first one. And they added those. And it's just, like... A new Ratchet and Clank one. Like an updated one. It's it's really good. And now they have like another other ones and like a crack in time. I think that's the one I played. Um I don't remember, but like they got really good again. <laughs> and I, I don't know like wh like what happened to them, like why they went off the rail, but then I guess they realized like nobody liked that direction and so they went back to the roots and stuck there. And now they got that new Ratchet and Clank game coming out. I, I can't play because I don't have a PlayStation. I only have a Switch. <laughs> and the last game in this list is Echo. Which, <laughs> if, you know, if you've heard of Echo and you know what it is, you're probably mad at me for not putting its um companion game that's set in the same world. It's by the same people that made Shadow of the Colossus. And it's technically supposed to be like in that same universe, in that world. Just in like a different part of it. But there's like otherwise there's like no connection. They just happen to be like in the same world. I like Shadow of the Colossus, I do. I just I like Ico more. And to be honest. That is a, it, there's a special place for Ico for me because 
I know most people probably won't remember the first game they ever played on a system, but Ico was the first game I ever played on a PlayStation 2. It was at one of those um, kiosks at Walmart. I was like, oh, it's a PlayStation 2. I haven't seen one in person. And I, I, like, I pick up the controller and there's Ico. I'm like, I don't know what this is, but I'm loving it. <laughs> and then like, Many years later, when I had my PlayStation, in 2009, I bought a copy, and I didn't beat it, but I got pretty far. I'm like, this game is amazing! And, yeah, it's it's really good. Like, Shadow of the Colossus, it's really good. I like it. It's just, it's so barren. I mean, that's the joy. That's the, like, that's the whole point of it. It's like, there's, it's just a big open world. And there's nothing to do except take down these colossus, these colossi, and it's it's a very specific like strategy game. I've never beat it. I haven't beat that or Ico. I only took down uh, three of the colossus. Um, I did own the game. I just I didn't get very far. Anyway, uh, moving on to Nintendo. Starting things off with, <laughs> um, according to my um, Nintendo Switch Rewind Wrapped or whatever, they had a, like a Switch Wrapped, like Spotify Wrapped, and um, it was like Switch in 2020. Look back on it, and my number one played game of 2021 was Animal Crossing: New Horizons. And it was also my number one game of 2020. And I played it, um, I think, um, 920 hours, something like that. And then my the second place game, the game that I played the second most was Super Mario Maker 2, 90 hours. So, um, yeah, there's um, a big gap between first and second place there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Animal Crossing is, oh, I can't even, it's another game I could do a full episode on. Um, also, um, it is my very first Animal Crossing to play. I've, I'd wanted to get into New Leaf. I had a 3DS and I wanted to play New Leaf. I just couldn't get a copy. And, and then this came out and I was like, I bought my Switch in uh, April 2020, and I bought a copy of, I bought, um, I, uh, along with it, I bought Breath of the Wild, Mario Odyssey, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, like one other game, physical edition, and then on digital, I bought... Animal Crossing, because I knew it was, you know, something you play all the time, and I figured, instead of just taking the cartridge out, in and out, in and out, in and out, I'll just have it digitally, so I don't always have to do that. Uh, oh, yeah, speaking of Mario Odyssey, that's the next one on there. I love Mario. Um, there's not a Mario game I don't like. Um, this Mario Odyssey is just the newest one. Technically, because, you know, Bowser's Theory. Um, but yeah, like Mario Odyssey is... I don't know how they're going to top that. How are they going to top Mario Odyssey? Maybe doing a full game like Bowser's Theory? Like a massive Skyrim-sized open world of Mario? Maybe not a Skyrim Mario. Like, please don't do that. <laughs> uh, that would turn it into Breath of the Wild. Speaking of which, my next game on here is Breath of the Wild, but I will not talk about Zelda in this episode because when when it came to writing down my favorite Zelda game, it was really hard because there's a lot. I, I put Breath of the Wild. Currently, Breath of the Wild is my favorite Zelda game. Because it's 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 incredible. Like what has there not can be said of Kent spoke. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, 
But the thing that the reason I'm not going to talk about it in this episode is because um, I, every time I was thinking about, oh, I could put this Zelda game. Oh wait, no. Um, I, I know I talked about this in my Zelda episode, and so like I kept going back to like, oh yeah, I talked about that in my Zelda episode. I don't have to bring it up here. And I'm like, hmm, when was my Zelda episode? That must have been a long time ago. I don't remember when I made that. And I like I, sh- I went on Repod, my the podcast platform I, I listen to podcasts on. And I like scrolled I, I scrolled all the way through and I didn't see it. So I went on Podcastix, which is my host site where I upload my podcast to. And I did a search in my episodes for Zelda, no results. And I was like, oh, I haven't done a Zelda episode yet? How? So instead of talking about Breath of the Wild here, I'm going to save it. And move on to Super Metroid. <laughs> yep, I I have two retro retro games here. I, I, I hesitated there because I said two, but then held up three fingers. Of course, nobody saw that, so I didn't have to say anything. Anyway, Super Metroid is my favorite Metroid. Uh, as I'm sure it's a lot of people's favorite Metroid. I I want to play the new one, Metroid Dread. But it's still... Ay, it's $60. Why, Nintendo? Why? Why is everything $60? There's no reason why Breath of the Wild should cost the same as Link's Awakening. Well, Link's Awakening is a great game. There's no deny. But graphically. <laughs> and it's a remake of like a 30 year old game. There's no reason. It should cost the same. Actually, I'm going to see if they lowered Dread. Not that I could afford it right now. I just want to know if they lowered it. Because while that's loading, I'm going to talk about a game that they really need to add to the Super Nintendo Switch Online thing. Let's see. Um, Dread. There we go. Search. Yep. $60. Anyway, what they should add to the Super Nintendo Switch Online service, Super Star Wars. I'm not even joking. That is one of my favorites. Favorite, not just Star Wars games, just games. Like I don't know how much. Hour, how many hours I put into that game as a kid? I it's like it took me like two or three years to beat it because I it was so hard. I remember because I was I was like a little little kid at the time, and it was so hard to beat. Like I could never beat it, and finally, like one day, I beat it. I was like, yay! And then after that, I was able to sit down and beat it in one go. And it's a few hours. So it's like... Once you... You know... I have a funny story about that too. Super Mario 64. I got it. uh, On my... 8th birthday? Um, 96. uh, Yeah, 96. That would have been 8. Wow. For my eighth birthday, my mom bought me a an a Nintendo sixty four with Mario sixty four, and from that day, because my birthday is May twenty fifth, so May twenty fifth, nineteen ninety six, until like two thousand nine, I hadn't I couldn't beat Mario sixty four. I know, I know, I'm I'm embarrassing. Well, no, 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 no. Let me rephrase that. I beat it easily. 
because Bowser, you, know, you beat the three Bowsers, you, you know, you beat the castle. I couldn't get all 120 stars. That's what I couldn't do. I had to think about that. I was like, wait, that's not right. <laughs> um, I did beat the game many times. So, like, it took me from 96 to 2009 to get all 120 stars. And then I got rid of that in 64. It wasn't my original. But, like, I would play it, like, all the time. And, I don't know, it was confusing. But now, I can get all 120 stars in just, like, a few days. So, yeah, things become easier with time. There are specific levels, I remember, like, the, like the clock level... That one was... I hated that one. And the rainbow level. I hated those two. Those were my two least favorite levels. I hated them. I hated them so much. Because I couldn't... I kept dying. I couldn't get in. It took me so long to get a star. And so, like, whenever I went into it on the, um... Mario All-Stars, when that came out... Um, about a year ago? Whenever that came out, I bought it. And, uh... Yeah, it was March. I think. It was, I don't know. Anyway, I bought it. I pre-ordered it. I got it. And I played it. And I got to those levels. I'm like, ugh. Here we go. Yeah. I just casually got all the stars. I was like, oh. Okay. Well. There's that. <laughs> anyway, I got off topic. You know. It's almost like I named my podcast The Digressor for a reason. Anyway, those are the exclusive games. Moving on to general. And considering I'm 37 minutes in and I've only covered, uh, let's see, 14 games. I've still got a lot here. Um, This is going to be a long episode. So... Yeah, I'm going to pause right here and get a drink. Okay, I'm back. Uh, okay, starting the general list. <laughs> Probably my other favorite game of all time. I have... Okay, I could make a list of my favorite games now that I think about it. And one of my favorites... Ori and the Blind Forest, and Ori and the Will of the Wisps. So, Ori and the Blind Forest was a life-changing game for me. Because for the longest time, I did not like indie games. Especially side-scrollers. So I'm like, why are they doing side-scrollers? We're past this. Do a 3D game. Come on, here with the times. That was my mindset for the longest time. And then, uh, I'd seen Ori in the Blind Forest, uh, like, on, like, Xbox thing, and I was like, come on, this, this console can, can do more than that. Like, why are you making these stupid games? We're way past side scrollers. Like, stop it. Stop it. And finally, one day, I was like, no, you need to try it. It's really fun. I was like, oh, fine. It's on Game Pass. I'll try it because it's free. And, uh, yeah, I fell in love with it. <laughs> like, like the, that opening, like, I, I, you know, usually if, you, you know, if a game has an emotional story, you'll get emotional at the end. With Ori and the Blind Forest, I got emotional at the beginning. And, like, at, whenever, like, it does that whole prologue thing and you do, that, like, the opening level and everything. And I'm just like, what? What? <laughs> Why is this game like this? <laughs> I was legit crying playing this side-scroller, an indie side-scroller. And I was like, I didn't think this was possible. <laughs> and I just, the music, I, I, you'll notice it was on the list of the soundtracks. I just, I, I listened, out of all the soundtracks I listed, that's actually the only one that I regularly listen to. 
I listen to the Ori and the Blind Forest soundtrack all the time. And when they announce the sequel, oh, you, can't, you better believe I pre-ordered that. I, as soon as pre-orders are available, I pre-order the heck out of it. And <laughs> I played about half of Will of the Wisps. I, okay, you said that I didn't like it. I, I don't remember why I stopped playing it. It's even better, though. Like, don't get me wrong. It is somehow better than, like, gameplay-wise. It's better. Like, they add to it. They expand on what makes the first one great. Because I haven't finished the second one, I don't know if it's story-wise better. Um, so far, I, I like the story of the second one. Um, okay, so... A few months ago, I bought Ori and the Blind Forest Definitive Edition on Steam, and I beat it. Again, I loved it, and so I, I was like, I, I missed playing it. I went out like a week without playing it, I'm like, I missed this. So I started playing it again, and I was about maybe a third of the way through, and something happened. I don't know what. It was like two or three weeks ago. Um, Steam glitched. And erased my save files. And I opened Ori in the Blind Forest. And it said, like, new file. And it was like, file one was like, 0%. I was like, no, no, no. And I was mad. I was like, I, I did all that for nothing. And I, I know I, like, rage closed Steam. And, like, an hour later, I was like, wait. There's a sequel. Does Steam have? And I did. And it was on sale. So I bought it. And so the last couple of weeks I've been playing Ori and the Will of the Wisps. And so far I'm further than I was on the Xbox. And yeah, it's, it's better than I remember. I, I, don't, I honestly don't know why I stopped playing. Because it's not a bad game. It's not. I love it just as much as the first one. And... You better believe if they announce a third one, I'm going to pre-order that one, too. <laughs> I am so glad this series exists. And then, like, I don't remember what series it was. There was some game, it was like, I think it was like a fighter series, where Ori was like a DLC character or something, and I was excited because he's getting recognition. And, yeah. And I spent... All that time talking about one, technically two games. Um, going on to Gone Home. Uh, the the name of that studio. I love that studio also. Um, crap, I forgot the name of that. I forgot the name of that studio, but like I loved them. Uh, I I can think of the name. Like I I picture the logo, but I can't think. Let's see, Gone. Home game. Okay, uh, picture the logo, but I can't remember. Fulbright. Fulbright Company. That's the name of the company. This is another one of those where I like everything they've done. I just, that was my favorite. Because they've done two main games so far. There's Gone Home and then there's Tacoma. Both are similar in the sense that they're story-based exploration games where there's no enemies like you're, you're not gonna die there's no lives um you just you you um like explore at a leisurely pace and the story unfolds as you explore and it's much it's a much slower paced game and i love it wait let's see the full Right. No. Full bright. There we go. So the reason I'm looking them up right now is because they. Oh yeah, they, they, they did a. The first project was a DLC called Minerva's Den in Bioshock Two, which I never played. So technically, I don't love everything they've done because I don't know if I love that. I have played Bioshock Two. It is not on this list. <laughs> It's not that it's a bad game. It's just not every game that I've liked is going to be on here. 
I know it seems that way. All right, so the next game, like uh, Tacoma, is okay. So Gone Home is my favorite game they've done. It's realistic. It's about you no, know, you play. Um, I forgot her name, but you they, you play as like like a college girl. She comes home from college on like winter break or something. It takes place in like ninety four, and you come home and the house is empty. And you explore, and like this, I'm not. I'm not gonna spoil anything, but you uncover the story of like what happened as you go. And there's, you could just the game is set up so that you could beat it in like 30 seconds, and like go straight to the attic and find out what happened. Don't worry, there's no death. Like I honestly thought, I mean, everything was leading to the attic. In fact, if you go to where the attic. Is there's like it looks like there's been like a murder and there's like a trail up there, like something had clearly happened involving the attic. And I'm like, oh no, I don't like where this ending is going, but it's not a murder, it's no one dies. I was actually happy with the ending. I was like, oh, okay, I don't know why the hallway looked like that then. <laughs> and, um, but like you can also spend hours because there's entirely pointless things in that game like in a good way like it's not just every single thing ties back into the story there's it's a lived-in house there's you could pick up everything everything has a story attached to it and and not all of it is related to the central story and i, I just i just love that <laughs> And my favorite thing about their games is they have um, audio commentary. There's like little bubbles that you, uh, you you can toggle it on and off. And I always have it on. And the, uh, like throughout the game, this these things are pop up all throughout the house or the space station in Tacoma. Which Tacoma is set on a space station where something had happened. And the story is told through holographic video cameras where, like, instead of, like, playing a video back, it's a holographic recording. And you can play it forward and backwards. So, like, the entire story of what happened before you got there is played out through holographic um, recordings. And it's, uh, I'm not doing it justice, but both games have these um, direct... Uh, these audio commentary bubbles all throughout the space station in the house. And it's different people on the team. It's a small team. And uh, it's different people on the team talking about, like, oh, I, I, I used my cat for the picture on the mantle uh, or stuff like that. And I love it because it just adds another, like, personality thing to it like you really get to know the, the developers but you don't really get to do that in a lot of games usually you don't even think about the directors they're just names flying up at the end but like i feel like i actually know the team at fulbright because of these two games like whenever um i played tacoma and like i, I played some of these audio cameras and he was like oh yeah him he's one of my favorites he's so funny because like i knew these people from the last game and and they got another game coming out. They um, I'm kind of curious how they're gonna do it, in their style. I don't know if it, there's this change in their style. It's called Open the World, Open the Roads, and it looks like um like a road trip uh story. Which if it is, then their you know singular setting, slowly leisurely telling a story wouldn't work i don't think I'm, I'm really interested to find out what this game's going to be actually let me see when is it it was um revealed on at the game awards in 2020 and it's set to be released 2022 and it's a mystery thriller <clears throat> huh it's coming to PS4, PS5, and Xbox Series X and S and PC, but not Xbox One. But yeah, like it, there's no no date yet. Oh wait, gameplay open open roads utilizes a unique and engaging interactive dialogue system that moves the narrative along, exposing character flaws, secrets, and buried truths. 
Yeah, that actually that sounds that sounds like a full break game. <laughs> that pretty much sums it up. <laughs> I'm just really excited to find out what like, are they just going a different direction with their style, or are they going to somehow try to incorporate like that that narrative exploration into this? I just I can't wait to find out more. Anyway, <laughs> maybe I okay. So maybe this okay. This was a the third part of a trilogy, but this might have to be cut into two because I can't shut up about these games I like. <clears throat> so these next two games, I'm how so much has been said about these two games. I don't have to say much about them. I just have to say the names, and you'll know what I mean. Both of their soundtracks were on the list. And what's funny is their soundtracks, you know, the, the two games are completely different from each other, but yet the soundtracks feel kind of similar. And I'm talking about Skyrim and Minecraft. Okay, so I will talk about them very briefly, just my personal experience with them. <clears throat> Minecraft, at least. I, I've been playing that for over 10 years. I haven't been playing it in a while. I have it on my on my Switch. I could pop it open right now. Actually, I don't think... Emery bought me a bigger micro SD card for it. Because I only had... It was like um 100 gigs. It was like 125 gigs. And I, I was running out of space. And so Emery bought me a new... It was an, like an Animal Crossing one. for It was like 100 and, uh, 250 uh, gigs. And I'm still coming across games on, on here. I'm like, oh yeah, I want to play that. Like, this isn't installed. Ah. Okay, so I don't see it on the list. I have Minecraft on my Switch. And I, oh wait, what if I arrange by title? There we go. That'll be easier than I knew I most recently played it. Let's see. <clears throat> um, Minecraft is up oh, there. It is. Yep. Hasn't been installed. <laughs> okay, it's installing, and I will be playing Minecraft later on. <laughs> so. Eh, I won't tell those stories. I'll tell those in another another episode. So going on to an, uh, two more games that go together, but directly go together. Life is Strange and Life is Strange Before the Storm. <clears throat> now this game was made by um don't don't wood Don Wood nah. Okay, I don't remember the names. Uh let's see. Life is strange two colors that's not the one i don't nod i was way off <laughs> well i'm mean, gonna the don't part right there's no wood so uh this is like this is like gone home but like on a bigger scale where it's entirely narrative driven and at first okay so i don't i'm not a big fan of telltale games and this is basically a telltale game but not this is how you do those games like the life is strange games like it's like a movie that occasionally you get to make a decision on and the decisions affect the rest of the game. And the Telltale games, I, I've i played a couple, and they're not terrible. Just, I don't know, I always get bored with them. But the Life is Strange series, I just I love them so much. Like, the story, I got really invested. I really cared about these characters. And I, th I, th I, don't, I think it was the end of the second episode. Uh, let me see... Uh, let's see, the first one was Life is Strange, yeah, let's see, episodes, wait, can I see the list of episodes, plot, uh, it doesn't say what the episode, okay, so at one of the end of the episodes, 
you have to basically stop somebody from jumping off a building. And this scene was such a big deal to me. Like, it was, I was legit, I had like an anxiety attack and it was like crying. And I didn't realize, I, I, you see all the time, like games are always saying, your decisions will have an impact on the game. And it's like, okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> But this is the first time I've actually legitimately seen, like, consequences of your actions in games. And luckily for me, <laughs> I'm big on exploration. Because I want to look at every little thing that can be looked at in games. And there's a scene earlier in the episode where... Because there's five episodes in the game. It's one of those. There was a scene earlier in the episode where you're in her dorm room. And you have the option to just, you know, you, you talk to her. You have your interaction. And you can leave. And continue the story. But I stayed. And I looked at every single thing. Like the pictures on the wall. And I, I looked in her journal. I felt weird. And it was like telling some of her personal story. And like when you're on the roof with her. She's like, you don't even care about me. Like, nobody cares about me. And, and you, because you look through that stuff, you have those options. To like, actually, what about your brother? I know your brother loves you. And, and she's like, you, how do you know about my brother? And, or I don't even know if that's the, like what's actually said, but like you use that to help her and you save her. And, I was like, it was so intense. I was on the edge of my seat and the episode ended right there. Like, and when you save her and I was just like, that was just way too good. Like, this is not be happening. And the, the whole, the whole series is like that. It's really good. And after I beat it, I actually, I went through and I made different decisions and it is a completely different game when you make different decisions. The second time through, because I knew what would happen. I wanted to see. Um, I didn't look through her stuff. I didn't do the stuff that I knew you needed to do to help her. So whenever I got to the roof, those options weren't there. And she jumps. And she's not in the rest of the story, obviously, because she's dead. But in the, in the version I played the first time, she's a major character. And... Yeah, so it's like, holy crap, this is so good. Like, this is like the first game I've ever seen that actually, where your actions actually affect the game in a major way. <laughs> and the 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 second, oh yeah, I almost forgot the time travel thing. Like, I'm I'm so invested in the story that I keep forgetting I have time travel powers. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, by the way, there's time travel in this. What? Uh, go on. <laughs> Um, Life and Strange Before the Storm, it's a prequel, and all I'm going to say is, I'm glad that they didn't include a spoiler at the end, because there, I don't want to spoil anything, even though I technically spoiled that, I didn't give any names, because I forget her name, I think it was Rachel, there was a Rachel somewhere in the story, I haven't played them in years, Anyway, um, <laughs> there's a character that you know that uh, in um, the life in Life is Strange that something happens to them, and that's a, they're a major character in Before the Storm, and I was afraid at the end of the game he would jump ahead and be like, and then this happened, but no, apparently it. They were smart in the way they did this. They're intended to be played in order. Like, you play before the storm, and it go, it leads directly into Life is Strange. Because it doesn't end with a spoiler. It ends where that one begins. And, yeah, like, I was so happy about that. It's not like The Hobbit. I'm mad about what they did with The Hobbit. Because I want to watch The Hobbit trilogy and then The Lord of the Rings trilogy. But, No. They're, the Hobbit is bookended with Lord of the Rings. 
because it starts off with that scene where you know Gandalf comes by and and like Bilbo's like I was working on a book and like it ends with him finishing it. and it's like <laughs> if you're it's your first time watching this you'll become so confused like what was that all about they didn't do that with Life is Strange anyway <laughs> this is this next one it's another case of me listing my favorite in this series, even though I like them all. Life at... Wait, no. Um, Fallout New Vegas. Mm. When I say all, I just mean from Fallout 3 on. <laughs> I even like Fallout 76. I know I'm like the one person that does. I mean, I probably... I bought it like a year after it came out so like they probably already patched out all the bugs but yeah by the time i got it it was a decent game like i actually really enjoyed it yeah um because bethesda bought it and fallout 3 on were good obsidian did the, the fallout new vegas which is ironic because they made the original well the people in Obs I don't I don't remember exactly. I think the people in Obsidian made the original Fallout games, and then Bethesda made a uh, Bethesda bought Fallout, and then let them. They had started a new company, Obsidian, and let them make. A Fallout game, and it's like the best Fallout game, which is funny because it's not even in the same style as theirs. I don't like the top down strategy games, those have never interested me. They're probably good games, I just I'm not into that. I did try to play the original Fallout, one of my old roommates had it on his computer, and I played it for about 20 minutes, and I was like, Yeah, no. <laughs> it's not my thing. I'm sure it's a good game. Like I, it wouldn't have been a cult hit if it wasn't. <laughs> not everything is for everyone. So moving on. Oh yeah. Um, I even liked Fallout Four. Like I know everyone hated that, and they hated. Like I did get kind of annoyed that like it had like like I think one of the biggest complaints was the dialogue, and that is kind of annoying, where it gives you these options. But your character doesn't say what the options were. Like, whenever you select an option, they say something completely different. And it's like, that's not what I... Oh, okay. But that I don't hate the game because of that. It's just it's a little annoying. Anyway, moving on. Oh, yeah. Island Saver. Oh, okay. This was clearly meant for little kids. It's a free game. It's on... Xbox, PlayStation, and Switch. I own it on all three, which it's not as impressive as it sounds because it's free, but there's paid DLC, and I love it so much. I bought the paid DLC on all three consoles. It is... Okay, so... <laughs> you want to teach people how to, like, do stuff. This, this is how to do it. Where was this game when I was a kid? They... It's an educational game without listing itself as an educational game. Because, like, it teaches you about, like, taxes and interest rates and stuff like that. While not direct... It's, like, you don't realize you're learning as you're playing. You're, like, on an island and you're trying to, like, save... It's hard to explain. Like, it's a very cartoony game. And you're, like, cleaning up this island and... And you gotta like m like manage your your budgets and like there's like a loan shark who's like a literal shark, and you've got to um you can either wait for the loan to be approved, or go to a loan shark and get it right then, and whenever you pay him back, he he keeps asking for more and more and more and more and more, and it's like nope, that's why you gotta wait for the loan <laughs> the right way and slowly pay it back. And stuff like that. Like it's it's a really good game. I played it on all three. I I played and beat it on all three consoles, including the DLC. <laughs> um, oh yeah. 
Doom. <laughs> uh, yeah, Doom. And by that, I mean all of them except the third one. <laughs> the Doom 3 is not really Doom. They added cutscenes and dialogue and it and introduction. No, Doom is something you just jump into. Even the even the reboot just starts up. Like there's like a five second cutscene, like from your character's perspective, like looking left and right and smashes the head of a demon thing, and then he stands up and then you have control. But that's it. Five seconds. This is like. The first hour of the game is talking and walking and following the all these other characters around and and you got to go through like oh, it's so boring. So I like all of the Doom games except for Doom Three. I own all of them on all the consoles, including I have it on Switch, Xbox, and PlayStation. Even Three, I was like, I don't care. I don't. I have a whole series. I, I'd rather have it as a set than just have, like, missing gaps. Because what's funny is you would think Doom 64 being a Nintendo a Nintendo game because of the 64 would only be on the Switch. Nope. It's also on PlayStation and Xbox. <laughs> Doom 64. But, yeah, that. I also have Doom Eternal and the, the new Doom, the reboot. So, like, I own every single Doom. <laughs> Even the one I don't like. Um, so another case of me adding my favorites: Grand Theft Auto Five. I am a huge fan of the series. I plan on getting the trilogy remastered. The um, the deluxe edition or whatever it's called. I forgot the name. Not on the Switch, though, because all the reviews say that the Switch version basically nerfs it. And I, I'd rather have, you know, the best version, which I'm going to... Okay, so I have plans for the next month or so to get, like, a futon and a dresser and a TV. And I'm going to start getting more consoles again. That's... I um I have planned, like, I, I know when, like, my paydays are and stuff, and it's every two weeks, and I know what I'm going to do with each of the paycheck for the next couple months. And one of the last things on the list is an Xbox One S. X. I'm getting the X this time. And then I'm getting the Grand Theft Auto Trilogy because I have never played Grand Theft Auto 3. I have played... One, Vice City, San Andreas, Vice City Stories, Liberty City Stories, four, five. I think that's all of them. I've played all but the second and third one. Of uh, is um the stories from Liberty City DLC for four? Does that? Because I know some people consider like the Gal Ballad of Bay Tony, yes, that's that's the name, the Ballad of Gay Tony and the Chinatown Wars to be. Wait, Chinatown Wars is a DS game. Anyway, I haven't played that one though. Though there's like I think there's like a London DLC for the original game. I haven't played that. Okay, so I haven't played them all. I'm a huge fan of the series. I cannot wait for GTA Six, which I am convinced is going to be. In Vice City. I am looking forward to it. Oh, uh, where am I? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Chips Challenge. That's a classic. That's a classic. Uh, I played that. I think that's my first computer game I ever played. Like, back in the early 90s. <laughs> wow. I feel so old. But, yeah. Um... I actually completely forgot about it. But yeah, it's on Steam. And not only that, the the guy who created it got the uh Chips Challenge was made by one person. His name is Chuck something. And he made it back in the eighties. And he made Chips Challenge two in the mid two thousands. And he made a third one 
um, a few years ago, but it's not technically Chip Challenge 3, because, like, he lost the rights to it for some reason. I don't remember. I think something with, like, Screw Attack or something like that. So, he, um, he made, like, a spiritual successor called Chuck's Challenge 3D, where it's the same thing, but, like, a 3D graphics, not a perspective, but it's, it looks really good. And because it's, uh, so it's like a, a new IP, he does the same thing, but adds like a fantasy element to it. It's like a, you play as like a dragon and there's, I, I bought this, there's like a collection uh, on Steam and I bought it and I played it a little bit. I was like, oh, this is fun. This is, it's the same thing. This is different graphics. And I liked it. It's it's like a simple. It's not complicated at all. Like, but that's it's not a bad thing. All right, moving on to. Uh, okay, so I named this sequel specifically because I like this sequel, Dracula Two: The Last Sanctuary. I typically don't like point and click games. They they bore me. I do not like point and click games, with one exception. This one, we had this one growing up. We had this, we had the trilogy. There was uh, three Dracula games, and this one was my favorite. Now there's five. I didn't know they made a four and five. I own all five on Steam. And yeah, I, I don't know what's, I don't know what's so different about the second one as opposed to the, you know, the other four. But I tried playing them, and they just, I was like, meh, this is boring. But the second one, I just couldn't not love. I don't know where I was going with that. But yeah, this is, it's a really good game. Like, the atmosphere of it and everything. It's a point-and-click game that I actually like. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> Just Cause 3. Um, so I made a mistake in playing Just Cause 3 first. That was my first Just Cause. And so I saw Just Cause and Just Cause 2 for sale. And I was like, yeah! And I bought them. And um, they're not the same. They, um, they, um, they are not the same. And I hated them. I hated them so much. And then, like, I, I don't know. Um, after, after Just Cause 4 came out, I pre-ordered the gold edition of that, by the way. Because I was expecting another Just Cause 3. And it wasn't the same. It's, Just Cause 3 was like that Goldilocks game. It's just right. Like, you got like the... Uh, like, this, like the wingsuit and like exploding the bases and liberating this, the, the islands and stuff. It was a perfect game. And all the DLC... I bought the... It was like the 3XL edition. It has like all the DLC. I bought that. I love it. And so I, I pre-ordered the gold edition of Just Cause 4. And you know, you still free the island, but you don't blow up bases. It's a different game. Well, because I pre-ordered it, I got like a, like a jetpack so I, I can actually fly instead of just glide. I'm falling with style. <laughs> and it was... You know, they added a tornado. Woo. <laughs> I didn't beat it. I got pretty far into it, though. Um, I like it. But, uh, I will say, Just Cause 3 is by far my favorite in the series. I love it so much. And uh, let's see. Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver. Ah, that game. <laughs> um, our parents didn't know what they got into. Less than two. Um, so they bought a Dreamcast. I think I in my uh, my uh, video game history, my my personal video game history episode. I talked about that where my parents got us a Dreamcast, and they they did uh, they got us a bunch of games, and one of them uh, was Legacy of Kane's Soul Reaver, and I guess they didn't realize it was such a dark game. And one day, um, the mom was walking by, and it was, I don't remember what, 
what was on the screen, but she was like, oh, she was horrified. Like, what are you playing? It's like, oh, it's this game you got us. Like, we didn't buy you this. We only have the games you bought us. I was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> so we weren't allowed to play that anymore, but I bought it on Steam, and it's, I finally beat it. Wait, no. Maybe I beat it back then. I know I saw the ending. I didn't beat it on Steam because I only bought it a year ago. And I haven't... I've only played a little bit of it. So I didn't, but I don't know when I beat it or if I beat it. Maybe I saw a video. I don't know. There's like a whole... I later found out there's a whole series of Legacy of Kane, And there's like a whole lore behind it. And I was like so excited. There's even a, a Soul Reaver 2. Which I was like, what? Yes! <laughs> oh, yeah. MDK2. It's another uh, game... Fly, no, uh, Dreamcast game that they gave us that we got. Um, and that was another Dreamcast game, and it was fun. It was cartoony. I liked it. Um, I've always remembered it. I've always wanted to play. It. I heard there was a third one, and I couldn't find it. I also couldn't find the first one, and it hasn't been ported anywhere. I don't think. And it's I bought it on Steam, but it won't load. I can't get it to load on my computer. <laughs> um, Portal. I like I like all three games. That's right. I said all three games. Even though it's not an official release, Valve did put Mel's stories on Steam. Um, I think that was the name of it. Uh, but yeah, it was really good. Uh, okay, so somebody was like, Oh, you know Valve doesn't care about their property because they put this fan-made game on there. No, no, that doesn't mean Steam Valve doesn't care about it. That just means this fan-made game is really good. It's good enough that the that Valve, the people behind Steam and Portal, thought it was good enough to put on Steam. That doesn't mean they don't care. That just means this is a really good game. And yes, I bought it and I played it and it's very good. It's a very good story. And so, even though it's not an official Portal game, Valve acknowledges it and allowed it on their platform. So I consider it an unofficial sequel. Uh, actually, it's a prequel. So it, there's a Portal trilogy in my mind. And I love all three games. Anyway. Uh, so, um. <sighs> Ori and the Blind Forest. I already talked about that. But I talked about how I hated indie games. Well, playing that opened my eyes. And if it had not been for Ori, I would not have ever played Thomas Was Alone. That's like the like the ultimate version of what I was afraid of back then. Like, this is a bare-bones side-scroller. Like, you play as shapes. And... It has, like, Mighty Python kind of humor, like, the narrator, and it's hilarious. I love it. Um, <laughs> it's, like, e these existential blocks. Like, like how was I existing? <laughs> like, I'm going to do this thing that I'm going to call jump. <laughs> it seems to get me somewhere. I'm really good at falling. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really good. I have beat it once. Oh, speaking of game I beat once. Ghost Recon Wildlands. I don't know why everyone hates this game so much. Every time I look it up, everyone's like, oh, this is one of the worst games ever. I'm like, why? I 100% of this game, and I love it. And I bought it. I, I bought the Ultimate Edition. I, it was, it's such a great game. I also played the second, the, wow. The, the one after that, I forgot the name, Breakthrough, I think. Breakout? Breakthrough? I didn't like it as much. I didn't get too far into it. It probably gets better. I don't know. I'm trying to run through these now. Oh! Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy. Oh, that's one of my favorite games. For the longest time, I actually I actually would tell people who asked me what my favorite game was that it was Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy. And it is. It's still like up there. Like It's one of my favorite games. And I bought it on Steam. There's, um, I, I won't have time in this video. But at some point, I'm going to do an episode about Steam. I'm just going to list all the games I have on Steam because I have so much. 
an epic. Actually, you know what? I'll do an episode on. Like. Oh yeah, I did say I was gonna get back to another list because I list. I said the. Uh, I have a list for the Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo. And then I have a PC games part one and part two list. Part one is Steam and Epic Games because those are so long. And then PC games part two is like all the other platforms, um, like Amazon Games, uh, Ubisoft, EA Origin, GOG, and stuff like that. And I have so many games. <laughs> And yet, I still manage to get bored sometimes. Anyway, moving on. Oh, I'm nearing the end of the list because I don't, I can't scroll anymore. All right, let's see. Saints Row Four. Okay, so I love the whole series. Um, I'm currently playing Saints Row the Third on the Switch. Um, for Christmas, I um. I didn't, I didn't really get anything for Christmas. I actually kind of asked them not to get me anything for Christmas. Um, it just, it's a long story. I just felt like I, I didn't really want anything because, well, I don't want to get into that in a podcast episode, but I, I just, I told them I didn't want anything for Christmas. So, yeah, when I say I didn't get anything for Christmas, that's not a, I didn't get anything for Christmas. It's like, no, I didn't get anything for Christmas. I didn't want anything for Christmas. But I was looking through the eShop because I saw on Twitter, it was like, oh, they have an epic sale in the eShop. And I'm scrolling through and it's, oh, the $60 game is now $54. Yay. But I did see Saints Row the third and the fourth game were on sale for $2 each. So I bought them both. So that's the only thing I got for Christmas. And it's, it's technically it's what Nintendo gave me because it's an awesome sale. I wouldn't have bought them otherwise. I, I love the Saints Row games, but yeah, like I like they're two dollars for these great games. Of course, I'm gonna buy it. <laughs> um, I I don't know which one is my favorite. Um, the Agents of Mayhem. I actually I bought that one. I bought like the Ultimate Edition on Xbox. And I only played it like once because it was it was kind of marketed as like the next version of Saints Row, and it's like it's it's like it's Saints Row on the next level. It's the evolution of Saints Row. It's so past where it was that it's got a new name. And and I was like, it's it's not really that good. They they were like, because there's so many characters you can play as and they each have their own personality and, and characteristics and, and movements and stuff. And it was, that was kind of the thing for me though. It was too overwhelming. I had to, too many characters. I didn't like it. I mean, it was okay at first, but like I only played it for a couple of days, and I just I stopped playing it. And yeah, and but now they're saying, oh, it's not a, it's not part of Saint Row. It's its own separate thing. That's not what you said before. <laughs> but I'm so glad they're rebooting it because, like, um. I did really like what they did with Saints Row 4 and Gat Out of Hell. Like, they kind of went, like, overboard, like, like, over the top, ridiculous. I know a lot of people hated that, especially after, like, the first and second one were kind of grounded. And the third one's a little out there, and the fourth one just lets go of reality altogether. And I love that. I just, I love that so much, like, for the game. But... I was thinking, like, Saints Row 5, like, if they're going to top this, it's going to have to get, like, so ridiculously over the top, it's not even going to be fun anymore. And I guess they realized that, too. So, they just, they rebooted it, which, they, they like, I know a lot of people are mad. They're like, oh, no, like, I like those characters. They're still there. Let's go play those games. They basically, they grounded it again, kind of. It's back to the streets, but they, they kept in some of the ridiculous elements. So it's like a blend of the old Saints Row and the new Saints Row. And I think it's good. I, I'm, I'm excited to see how this goes. 
I probably won't pre-order it. I'm going to wait for, like, the reviews. I'm not going to base entirely off reviews, but, like, I want to see what people think first and, like, see the gameplay video and all that after it comes out. It's not one I'm going to pre-order, but I am I am interested to see how this goes because I am a, I'm a fan of the series, and I, I'm glad they're rebooting it. <laughs> Probably the only person that says that. And for the next one, <laughs> Red Wings, Aces of the Sky. If you've never heard of that, I never heard of it until last month. Or the month before? I don't remember. It's, um, because I have Amazon Prime. And part of that is Amazon Gaming. You get free games, kind of like with Game Pass. I mean, like with the uh, Xbox Gold and PS Plus. PlayStation Plus. Um, so with um, Amazon Gaming, you don't just get like two or three games a month. You get like like ten free games, and it changes every month. And it's it's interesting. Like most of the games I've never heard of, they're indie. Some of them are. Uh, but then you get like one month. It was I think it was um, November. There were like half of the games were Wallace and Gromit games. <laughs> and I, um, I was like, oh, they made Wallace and Gromit games? And all of them are here. And one of them is this one called Red Wings, Aces of the Sky. And it's basically like a World War II style dogfight game. It's I said World War II style because it doesn't actually say World War II. It's like based on World War II, but they don't want to say World War II because that's a downer. Um, it's, like, set in, like, a different world type of thing because this was, like, they they, they they name islands and stuff, like, countries that don't exist. And they try to make, like, a realistic type game without actually bringing the real world into it. I love dogfighting. Like, planes, not like, you know, like, dogfighting. <laughs> um, and this game is just, it's the best dogfighting I've ever seen. And I've I've played, like, a lot of games where like, you, like, fly planes and dogfight. And there's some, no, there's some decent ones. But this one, I love it so much. Like, I've, I haven't beat it because I've only had it a couple months. I haven't played it that whole lot. I got pretty far, though, and I'm just like... It was funny because, like, when I get new games, I like to test them out a little bit. And with this one, like, I was just trying to test it out, like, do, like, a mission or two. And next thing I knew, like, I had been playing for hours. And I was like, wait, when the sun go down? <laughs> like, this game is so good. Just Red Wings, Aces of the Sky. It's, uh, well, currently it's not free on Amazon because that was only for November, I think. But, yeah. If you have Prime... Um, which everyone has Amazon Prime. You, you don't realize what all you have access to. Because I used to think it's just two-day free shipping. But no, you get the Prime Video, Prime Gaming. Uh, you get um, a whole bunch of stuff. And it's just, I, the list keeps getting longer that I, I don't even... Like, I saw, like, Amazon Gaming. I was like, oh, yeah, that's Luna. Like, no, that's its own separate subscription. Like, oh, then what is it? It's... Oh, it's like, it's like, it's kind of like Steam, but like Amazon. And it's, it's, I have my own game collection on there. I have like every, I don't know, it's really good. <laughs> mm. Assassin's Creed Odyssey. That is my favorite Assassin's Creed game. But I like every Assassin's Creed game. I own all of them on Xbox. Every single one, even the Assassin's Creed Chronicles trilogy, um, India, Russia, and China, I own all of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. Something that kind of upset me is um, that every Assassin's Creed is on Xbox One because they, you know, they originally started making Assassin's Creed on the 360. And uh, all the way up to Black Flag. And then um, Rogue, I think, was... Um, Rogue was the last um, Xbox 360 game. Unity was the first Xbox One game. 
And then over time, they started p- porting those other games over. They had um, well, Black Flag got its own independent release. And then they did the Rebel Collection. And, and then they did the um, the Ezio Collection. And they just did um, Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered. The only game... From the three, uh, from the original, from the 3DS, a 360. Have I been saying 3DS? Oops. Um, 360. The only game from the 360 that wasn't ported over to the Xbox One, and therefore the only Assassin's Creed not on the Xbox One, is Assassin's Creed, the very first game. <laughs> Which I know it's just, it's a nitpick. It's still backwards compatible. You can play it on the Xbox One. But still, do they not care about their original game? That's just that's something that kind of bothered me a little bit. And, uh, I, Watch Dogs 2. I like all three. I, I own all three Watch Dogs games. I love them all. I love how dark Watch Dogs is. And I like how over the top Watch Dogs Legion is. But Watch Dogs 2 is like, it's another Goldilocks game. It's just, I just love it. And I will, I will admit, um, a big part of it is the setting. Uh, because it's set in San Francisco. Um, that was, uh, when they first, like the first, like the, ad, the first promotional stuff for it was like the posters and all that. I was showing like the Golden Gate Bridge. I'm like, oh, it's not going to be in Chicago. This one's in a better city. It's not saying anything. I've never been to Chicago. I mean, I have. I, I uh, not really though, because um, I I I've, I've had a plane in the like, layover and uh, at an airport at uh, O'Hare, but I didn't leave the airport. I didn't actually see the city. So I've been to Chicago. But I haven't. Anyway, I love Watch Dogs too, and all of the them. Um, also, Arkham Knight. That was my favorite Arkham game. Um, I love all three, and when I tell people Arkham Knight's my favorite, they're like, "Oh, why do you hate the first one?" Like, no, I I don't hate any of the Arkham trilogy. There is. There's four games, I know. I know there's four games. But I only count three of them. Arkham Asylum is a very great game. It's a slow-paced stealth game. Um, well, it's not, not necessarily stealth. I mean, you literally beat up a bunch of bad guys. But you use, like, strategy and stuff. It's a small island, but they use it well. Arkham City, it's a slightly bigger area. It's in kind of like a city area. And so you could do more Batmaning. But it's still kind of limited. And it, it's still a great game. Like, it's a great, great game. Um, but Arkham Knight is like the one where they just like... All restrictions are gone. And you get the Batmobile. <laughs> you have... Most of Gotham City, because there's you know you only get this the area in the middle, and then there's the ocean, and there's the, the 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 river and stuff. You can't go over to the other. You can't cross the bridges, but that's still a massive area. And like I was, pl- I played it for about two or three years, and I'm sitting there thinking. One day I realized I'd been playing. I had like like 140 hours sunk into the game, and I'm thinking. Wow, this has to be the longest night in history. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce this next one. Aero, A A E R O. I can't pronounce it, but it is a great game. It is also indie. Uh, I bought it. I bought all the DLC, which okay, you can buy the game and all the DLC. For less than ten dollars, and you will not regret it, especially if you love EDM. It's basically, um, it's a rhythm game with a 
spaceship. It's like on rails, and you gotta like follow the trail and and all that. It's it's really good. They like to the music and the soundtrack was was not on Spotify, so I couldn't do the on the list. But it totally would have been on the the playlist. Um. <laughs> Oh, I could do a separate video on this one. Just Dance. I own... Well, owned all of them at one point. The first two games are Wii exclusives. And then there's um, Just Dance 2. Or no, Just Dance 3 was released on PlayStation and Xbox. So I owned... Because I had a PS3, Xbox 360, and a Wii. I had Just Dance 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 2 on the Wii. And then on Xbox, I had the physical edition of all of these. The, um, is, um, Just Dance 2 and, uh, Just Dance 3 and 4 on Xbox. And then that's when they switched from numbers to years. I, ha I also own 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. And on the Switch, I own 20. So, even though that's the only one I own now, um, I owned all of them at one point. And I actually own, um, I later bought the digital version of Just Dance 2018, 19, and... No. Um, no, no, 17, 18, and 19 on the Xbox. I remember I had three of them. <laughs> And I don't have a way of playing this now. I have it on the Switch. But, like, I don't like playing it. Uh, I like playing it with the Kinect because you can actually dance. My problem with the with playing with the Joy-Cons, the, the Nunchucks, and the Wiimote, and the, um, the, the Motion Wand on the PlayStation is the, um, it only tracks the controller. You could literally stand still and just wave wave your hand, arm around and get five stars. However, with the Connect, you actually have to dance, and it's more fun. It's like I played the version I have on the Switch, and it's it, it's <laughs> it's a great game. There's great songs on it. It's just I want the Xbox version. <laughs> oh, um, the Blob Two. So, I think I made a mistake. I played the Blob 2 first, and I beat it. I loved it. And then, on uh, Xbox, they had, they, uh, they didn't release it on Xbox until a few years ago. And I bought them both. Um, on the Xbox One. And so, I finally played the Blob 1. And, <sighs> not the same. They apparently expanded on it and the what you can do and all that on the second one. Uh, yeah. First one's kind of boring, so start there and then play the second one. Because <laughs> if you play the second one first, you won't like the the first. It's kind of like how I played Just Cause 3 first and I didn't like the first two after. I mean, I like them now because like, I realize like what they are and that's not the point of what the Just Cause 3 was its own. Like each of the Just Cause games is its own story and gameplay, which is good. Keeps them separate. That's like, it's something fresh every time. Something that usually isn't fresh every time is Far Cry. I have Far Cry 5 listed as my favorite in this series. I own all of them on Xbox. It's Far Cry, in Far Cry 2, 3, Blood Dragon, 4, is the, um, a, no, um, Far Cry, crap, I forgot the name, Primal, uh, Far Cry 5, and Far Cry New Dawn, oh, wait, no, so I don't have them all, I haven't bought Far Cry 6 yet, I have played it, I actually, um, I worked for Ubisoft. I think I talked about this. I worked for Ubisoft briefly last year. Um, it was a temporary job. I wasn't fired or anything. I um, 
I was a demoist. I basically, I I played Far Cry Four. I, I played Far Cry Six, and I I gave them my feedback, and then, and, um, I was part of an event where I basically guided an influencer through the game while they recorded it and posted their review. And so, yeah, that was it. They hired temporary people to do that. They don't have their own people to do that. And so I have played Far Cry 6. I just didn't buy it. It is so good. Like, it's, you know... I had obviously they I had I had to sign an NDA at first like so I can talk about it now because it's past the the deadline we couldn't talk about it until after the game came out there was like a a deadline date like you can talk about it after this date and um so like my all my friends knew was that I was working for Ubisoft playing a game and they're like what game is it I can't say I can't say I can't say and so when I told them like wow what I finally could tell them out I was like I had like this big reveal I'm like I was playing Fire Cry 6 and they were like oh, how was it I was like it was another Far Cry game I mean it's they don't really change anything it's you played a Far Cry game you basically played them all but that is not a bad thing it, I mean it's it's not because it's such a great formula what they have going with it you basically i knew what to do like i didn't have to there is a long tutorial scene kind of like not like a like a tutorial it's like it has like a the messages pop on the screen i guess it's, if it's your first time playing far cry like it'll help you i already knew all of it because i've played all the others it's the same controls if you've played a far cry you can play this one and it's this it's it's not bad i love it and I want to play it again. I want to own it. When I get an Xbox again, I will buy it. And I will play it. And I will love it. Whether I like it or not. No, I will definitely love it. Um, so I don't have a lot left. Um, <laughs> okay. Lego Star Wars 2 The Clone Wars. That is probably a random one. That's probably nobody's, you know, top pick. Like, what's your favorite Lego game? Uh, Lego Star Wars. What's your favorite Lego Star Wars? The Clone Wars. <laughs> like, what? Um, because I have played most of the Lego games. I've played, you know, like, the Harry Potter ones. i played both Star Wars ones, Indiana Jones, the Batman ones. And I like them all. They're all really good. Um, but my favorite is the Clone Wars. Star Wars 3, the Clone Wars. And I, I don't know why. I just had more fun with that one. I think another part of it was the hub world is is so it's like a level on its own because like the hub world is on like a star cruiser thing like you're on a big ship and it's like um the different levels like the different um to go to each level you there's like a star map and you can like zoom in on it and like it take you to this planet have have these series of missions you go to this planet have this series of missions but, you know, it, it's not just that little room with the map. You can basically explore the entire ship. And, like, and leave the ship. There's, like, a little pod you can get into and, like, fly around outside the ship. And I'm like, this is a hub world? <laughs> I've never seen a hub world like this. Like, the Lego Star Wars had, like, the cantina on Lego Star Wars 2. Wait, no, Lego Star Wars. The first one was the prequels. Lego Star Wars 2 was the original trilogy and was the cantina. Um, oh, I don't remember what the first one was. The, 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 um, the hub worlds tend to be really small, basically. Not an entire star cruiser where you can fly around outside the ship. And that was a huge thing for me, like a huge reason why I loved it so much. The missions themselves are also great. Like, I think part of it was like, I don't know, because like, I haven't really watched all of the Clone Wars, so I don't know all the storylines. I've watched the season, I, I watched the movie in the first season, and I haven't watched the other six seasons. So, but like with 
like with Lego, Star Wars, and Harry Potter, and Indiana Jones, it has a you know, well-established story. You've seen Indiana Jones and Star Wars, and they're following that. So I know the story with this. As far as I know, it's an original story they're making up for the game. So, like, it has nothing to base it off of. As far as I know, it could be based on an episode. I don't know. But I do know that I really liked it. And if it is based on the show, I want to watch it even more. <laughs> All right. Let's see how many more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, more than I thought. But we're getting near the end. And this is almost an hour long. Uh, hour and 44 minutes. Um, I'll kind of run through these real fast. Mafia 3. Honestly, I never heard of this series until Mafia 3. A friend of mine let me borrow his copy for the Xbox. And I'm like, where has this series been all my life? And I bought the, uh, when they did the, uh, they did, uh, the remaster of the whole trilogy last year, I bought it. And of course, that was right before I moved, so I haven't been able to play it. So I don't know if I like the other two. I know I love Mafia 3. Uh, let's see, where am I? Murdered Soul Suspect. That was one of the first games I bought on Xbox 360. And I was surprised how good it was. Basically, no, the first game I bought on Xbox One. <laughs> wow. Um, <laughs> oops. You basically, you play as a ghost. Um, you're a cop, and the opening scene is, um, you're shot and killed. And you basically... The plot is you basically have to solve your murder, and because you're a ghost in Xbox One, you're able to, like, because you're transparent, you're a ghost, you can, like, travel through stuff, like walls and cars and stuff like that. It's, I wasn't expecting that, <laughs> but I liked it. It's a detective story with a twist. Shantae, half genie hero. I like all of them. They uh, they've slowly been re-releasing the other ones, and I bought them all, and they're all really good. There's even I think there's two more after Half Genie Hero. There's like the uh, there's like the Sirens one. That's like the newest one, I think. I but I bought them all. I love them, and they're all Shantae, the Shante series. Basically, Way Forward is a great company. I've I've never played a bad way forward game when i see that logo pop up first off it's really loud no matter how no matter how low i have my tv or my switch it just it blows out the speakers <laughs> but like i i get when i see the logo i get happy I'm like oh, it's one of those <laughs> super hot that's an interesting game like when i first saw the it was um when I first saw like the, the the screenshots and the the gameplay footage, I was like, I'm not gonna like this. I literally only got it because it was a uh, games with gold free title one month, and I played it. I'm like, wow, this is actually really good. And you basically play at your own pace because it. I don't know if you haven't played it before. Basically, the whole thing is you like the game only moves when you move. You can stand perfectly still, and the enemies are still, and you move. And then they move. So, like, they fire a gun. The bullet just sits in air. And then you, like, you slowly start moving. The bullet starts moving. And, yeah, like, it's it's a really interesting game. And they made a sequel. I think they made a third one. I don't remember. But then there's, like, another story going on behind it. And it's it's complicated. Let's see. Um, I'm trying to... I don't want this to get to two hours long, so I'm trying to rush through some of these. Uh, Titanfall 2. I, I, I like the first one, but I only like the gameplay. I didn't like that it was online only. And so when they, they announced the second one had a story, I was like, yep, and I bought it. I love it. Great game. I also, I didn't know that Apex Legends was, was set in that same universe until like a week after it came out. Uh, I saw it was by, it was by a, a respawn as well. And I'm like, hey, it's by the people that made Titanfall. Cool. And then I was like, I was telling a friend about it. And I was like, oh, yeah, you know, it's a, it's a Titanfall game. I was like, oh, that makes sense. Mm? <laughs> Tron Evolution. Uh, it's another one that was one of my first games to play on the Xbox 360. Um, oh, yeah, I think I talked about this in my last episode. The uh, full episode. The uh, last um. The uh, soundtracks, the Tron Legacy, 
yeah, like that. This game was like really fun. Like I was surprised, but it was good. Um, Unravel two. Um, I like the first Unravel. It was very good. And then they announced a sequel, and I was like, oh, cool. And I bought it. And it's so good, I don't even play the first one anymore. Because I went back and played it. That's where I played this, the second one. I'm like, hmm, this is not the same. Um, so. And then I actually just bought Unravel 2 on Switch a couple days ago. So, yeah. <laughs> so, I've been playing that game for all since it came out. Two more games here. Shoplifter HD. That one is a classic game for the Atari, the original Choplifter, and then it got several remakes like on the NES, Super NES, all throughout the years. Choplifter HD was it's like a full remake in HD uh on the PlayStation 2, I think, or 3. Probably the 3. And I I liked it. It's just, it, it, it wasn't backwards compatible on the PS4 when I bought it. I was like scrolling through my library like, where is it? No. <laughs> I wanted to play it. And last game. Oh, wait. Oh, no. I put this in the general category. Why did I put this in the general list and not the PlayStation list? Spider-Man. Okay, so I bought a PlayStation 4 Pro um back in April of this of 2021. Uh, I forgot it was the new year. And I moved in June. So I only had 2 months with my PlayStation. And I bought Spider-Man like right after I bought it. I didn't have a lot of time with Spider-Man, but I loved the time I spent with it. I especially love the web slinging and the Arkham the, the um Arkham style fighting. It is it is the best Spider-Man game. I didn't get a chance to play the Miles Morales one because you know, again I only had it a couple months and yeah. <laughs> and that's that's the list. Uh I don't know when I'm going to do episode 50. I do know I have plans for it. I know what it's going to be about. I am talking with somebody about doing it. But we just need our schedules to line up. And we need to figure out how we're going to record. Because, yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I don't want this to go to two hours so I'm just going to go ahead and end this now. So uh, have a good. Bye.